PCIe 5? Huh? Nah, PCIe 5? No, no, it costs too much. Okay, okay, okay. What about the B650E? But wait, that's still PCIe 5. Okay, the B650E motherboards have launched and they're sort of kind of available. Actually, I wasn't sure about this because, okay, it's the, the day that I'm shooting this is the 10th of October. I just got this Steel Legend B650E in from ASRock literally a day ago. And this is a board that we're gonna do a build around. But I was looking at this and there's really not a ton of differences between the X670E Steel Legend. We have one PCI Express 5.0 slot for our GPU, that's by 16. And we have one PCI Express 3.0 by four slot directly to the CPU. It's moved up a little bit in this version of the Steel Legend. It's at the very bottom of our Steel Legend X670E, but there's not really a lot extra going on. Okay, our X670E also has an extra PCI Express by one slot. That's nice but not really a ton of differences there. We got two M.2 at the bottom of the edge of the board here. That's PCI Express 4.0 on this board. We got our blazing, as ASRock calls it, uh, PCI Express 5 M.2 just below the CPU. We got our AM5 socket supporting DDR5 up to 6400 overclocked on this motherboard. DDR5 6000 is of course the sweet spot for this platform. I've already tested this motherboard at DDR5 6000 with our Kingston Fury kit of memory and it works really well on this platform. I also tested this motherboard with the 7950X and it does get toasty when you are using PBO, but it didn't thermal throttle as long as I had a reasonable airflow over the motherboard. Basically, we're talking about 140 millimeter rear exhaust AIO in a full tower case with pretty decent front air intake. The rest of the accoutrement on this motherboard is pretty modest. You've got two SATA ports. You do have two 30 pin, five gigabit USB front panel headers. You also have a 20 gigabit type C header. At the rear IO, we only have a single NIC. It's a 2.5 gigabit NIC. Uh, that's powered by our Realtek Dragon chipset. That's quite a departure from our X670E version of the Steel Legend, which has one one gigabit NIC and a two and a half gig NIC powered by the Intel 225V. We've also got four five gigabit USB ports and two 10 gigabit USB ports, one type A and one type C. We have a BIOS flashback button. Now something that you may not be aware of is that AM5, AMD has actually provided a BIOS flashing solution as part of the platform. So if you have any motherboard that, well, I shouldn't say any motherboard because the motherboard vendor can choose to omit it, but there's no extra cost. You see, in the past, you used to have a, have to have a microcontroller that would basically handle the flashing for you, but that's no longer the case. It's provided by the platform if the motherboard implementer chooses to implement it. See, in the past, you could get into a situation where you had a newer CPU than the motherboard was designed for that would work in the motherboard, but it needed a software update. How do you boot the motherboard in order to get the software update? Well, you need an older CPU or something like the BIOS flash button where you put the new software on a USB stick, you hit that, and that will load the software onto the motherboard even without a CPU. So it'll update the motherboard from a USB stick. It's pretty cool stuff. It's really, I'm glad it's a standard feature at this point. Back to the rear IO, we have two more USB ports. Those are USB 2.0, display port out and HDMI out because every AM5 CPU released so far has at least modest built-in AMD RDNA 2 graphics. Yeah, it's just two compute units, it's just for powering monitors. It doesn't even rise to the level of APU, but it is there. And then we've got our Wi-Fi 6E solution and our antenna connectors. For our audio solution, you may notice we've only got two analog ports and optical SPDIF. That's because analog audio out has basically become <laughs> Uh, thing of the past. Everything is digital now. So you, digital would be a USB connection or digital would be your optical SPDIF connection. You don't need to connect three analog wires into your motherboard anymore and really measure signal to noise ratio. That's not really a thing. The onboard audio codec is based around the relatively modest Realtek ALC897, but the uh, amplifier for the front panel and everything else is the Nehemic Audio, which is a higher end-ish audio solution. So uh, give and take. Now this is an eight layer PCB, and ASRock has done surface mounting for both the PCI Express X16 slot as well as our DIMM slots. One really cool thing you can see back here where the DIMMs are located on the back of the motherboard, the DIMM slots do actually solder through the motherboard in some places for mechanical strength. Otherwise, the DIMM slots uh, mount, they solder directly onto the surface of the PCB. That really helps at high speed with noise immunity. And they've done the same for the PCI Express 5.0 X16 slot. 
You can see our PCI Express by four slot is just standard through hole motherboard soldering, nothing special there. This is also a slot that's wired directly into the CPU. So I mean, theoretically, that would be capable of PCI Express four or five, but it would require redrivers and retimers and that would drive up the cost of the motherboard. So ASRock has elected not to do that. But that is a PCIe slot that will not bottleneck because it goes directly to the CPU bypassing all of the chipset. If RGB is your thing, there's three digital RGB headers and one 50-50 header at the bottom. And that's pretty much all there is to this motherboard. This will light up your AM5 CPU, even up to and including the 16 core. You only get two SATA ports, but you get three M.2 ports, one of which is PCI Express 5. So it's a reasonable mix of features. I really wish that the X4 slot was at the bottom of the motherboard, I think, because if you've got a really honking huge graphics card, it's gonna block that slot. I mean, a triple slot GPU would work, but if you've got a quadruple slot or a three and a half slot GPU, you're not gonna be able to use that physical slot. That's sort of a problem, I think, that's facing uh, micro ATX motherboards as well, even if there's a slot at the bottom. I mean, uh, micro ATX, you, it's all GPU. It's all GPU all the time. What are you gonna do? Now, when X670 launched, got a lot of criticism because we're seeing six, $700, $1,200 motherboards. Not a lot of people are really excited about $1,200 motherboards. I like the engineering of this motherboard. I mean, you could go more over the top in basically every area. But like I say, even if we're using PBO with a 16 core, this motherboard is adequate, assuming that you have reasonable cooling. DDR5 6000 is the sweet spot. This motherboard can go to 6400. DDR5 uh, testing with our 6000, you know, Kingston Fury kit on this motherboard wasn't really an issue. We could run a DDR5 6000, the sweet spot for AM5. So this platform will get you there. And this platform theoretically would get you there with PCI Express 5 GPUs. But we know that the 4000 series that's coming from Nvidia, they're not PCI Express 5. So. Could you save a little money and get something that's not PCI Express 5 for AM4? Yes, and there are other B650 chipset motherboards coming that will cost even less, but that are PCI Express 4 across the board. I'm gonna take a deeper look at those, but if you want PCI Express 5, this is one of the most economical options out there. So in that regard, you know, it's worth a look. I'm Wendell to Level 1. This has been a quick look at the Steel Legend B650E because B650 is launching because everybody said X670E is too expensive. I guess. It's still the same 16 plus 2 plus 1 power phase design as the X670E still legend, so power delivery is pretty similar. In general, I am worried about the lack of PCIe slots for peripherals, but that's just because I'm a peripheral fiend. Most people only have one or zero add-in cards beyond their GPU anyway, so maybe I'm worried for nothing. I don't know. Engagement challenge. What expansion cards do you actually have in your computer other than your graphics card? I'd like to know. Capture card? A discrete sound card? Why do you have a discrete sound card and not a USB sound card? AMD's clearly gone in the direction of lots and lots of extra USB connecti uh, connectivity for this chipset, which maybe is a little easier. Are people gonna open up their computer and plug it in? Or are they gonna have USB peripherals? I don't know, the pendulum swings. Anyway, that's enough rambling. I'm out of here. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.